Okay, so this is day six for the second distance learning packet math section. Um, and we are starting with something that we actually haven't yet gone over this year. Um, these are called transformations. And the four that we study are listed here. So the first one is called rotation. So that point at the origin, that's the center of rotation. So imagine, and this is what we would have done in class, um, if you get a piece of tracing paper, or if you're using a screen, you can just use a regular piece of paper, but you would you would put your paper over the graph, and then you could trace um, either triangle A or triangle B, and then put your pencil point at the origin, and then turn the paper, and you'll see that the triangle that you traced will turn and match exactly with the other one. Um, if you traced triangle A, you could rotate it clockwise, and it would match B. If you traced B, you could rotate counterclockwise, and then it would match A. The next one is reflection, so think of a mirror. And the x-axis, in this case, is like where the mirror would be. So if you, again, take your paper, hold it over the graph, and then trace A, and then also draw a line on the x-axis trace it, and then flip your paper over and line up the x-axis line, your triangle should match with B. So those are called reflections. Translations are just moving on a graph. So this time you don't really need um, to know that the origin is there. You could just trace triangle A and then just move your paper down to the right and it will line up with B. But the most important thing is for these three, the second um, figure that you draw is exactly the same as the first. And we call this congruent. So congruent is this word over here. And that means exactly the same. So this is a, a word used in geometry. It's pretty much like equals. So it's every, every piece of it is equal. So the angles of the triangle, the, the side lengths, everything is exactly the same. Okay, and then for the last one, this one is called dilations. So think of where you've heard this word before. Maybe when you go to the eye doctor, they put those drops in and it makes your pupils bigger. So think of your pupils, it starts off as a circle, okay, and the final shape is still a circle, it's just a bigger circle. So same goes for geometric figures, um, depending on which direction we're going. So let's say we started off with triangle A, then triangle B is an enlargement. So it got bigger, but still a triangle, and it is proportional. So if we think of the length of the side, so side A, this vertical side, started off at four boxes, and then it ended at being eight boxes. So that's twice, right? It doubled. And the same goes for the horizontal side. It started off at two, and now it's at four. So each side doubles in length. Or if we think of B being the first shape, and then we split everything in half to make A. Okay, so it's the shape itself is the same shape, but the size does change for dilations. Okay, let's see if we can do this. So again, this is all brand new and we're going to practice. Okay, so we have two triangles here and a couple things, um, again, this is all new, but when we use these letters, A, B, C, it's just talking about the vertices. So here's A, B, and C. Okay, and then we have another triangle, P, Q, R. So here it is, P, Q, and R. And the order of those does matter. Um, and it goes, you'll see that in the next um, example. So for A, um, it's asking us to show that both of those triangles are congruent. Okay, so a con congruent means, again, every aspect is the same. So when we write it like this, this little symbol is just for triangles. But the order 
is how these points line up. So A goes with P. So A and P are corresponding to the same point or the same, same vertice. Uh, B and Q go together. B and Q. And then C and R. So those are the matching or the corresponding points on the graph. So it says we need to um, reflect and translate. So we're going to start with ABC and we're going to reflect it and then move it. So translation just means move. Okay, so it's going to be hard to show this on a digital piece of paper, but um, on your paper, so you would get a piece of blank paper, like just a piece of printer paper, or if you have tracing paper, that would be the best. Again, if this was class, I would give this to you, and then we would just trace over the first triangle. So we're just tracing it exactly. And you're going to label, you're going to put points and label those points as they are on the graph. So I'm just tracing over this. Put a point and that's B. Because remember, when we're done, when we get to the, the next triangle, those points need to line up. So B needs to be where Q is. And then A needs to be where P is, and C needs to be where R is. So those are very important that we, we get those lined up. Okay, so there's, there's my triangle. So I don't know if this is going to work, but let's try. Hmm. Okay, so let me see if I can flip it. So the first thing is a reflection. Okay, so right now it's exactly the same, right? I could just move it around. Okay, but I'm going to reflect maybe. I can rotate, but I can't reflect. Well, that is not going to help us. So let me delete that. Okay, so when we reflect, we can just do it by hand. Um, we don't always have to have a piece of paper. So I'm going to draw this in a different color. All right, so I'm going to reflect it across the y-axis. So there's, our, there's our mirror. Okay, so C, I'm going to move to here. I'm going to put a dash or like an apostrophe to, to show that's our, our next um, figure, which is called the image. And then B, it, it was one, two, three to the left. So now it's one, two, three to the right. That's B prime. And then A, one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. So A prime is there. So there's our reflected triangle. So you can you can visualize that. Okay, so it's reflected across. And then the last part is to translate. So we're just going to move each of these points straight down. And they all have to go the same number of spaces. So if we count, so A, let's look at A prime. So it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this would be A double prime because it's a second transformation. And just make sure A should match up with P. And going back to our triangles, A and P are the first letters, so they do go together. And then B has to go down the same number of spaces. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six. B double prime. C goes down one, two, three, four, five, six. So they do match up perfectly. 
And then again, C and R should go together, and they do, the last letters listed, and then B, B and Q go together. Okay, so that's how we show it. And then the second part says, if you reverse the order of your reflection and translation in part A, does it still work? So if we did it in the opposite order, so if we moved it, and then we did our reflection. Okay, so let's think about that. So let's say we took the original one that we drew, and we're going to move it first, and then reflect it. So if I move this, so I'm going to move it down six spaces, okay? So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I moved it down six. And then I'm going to reflect across the y-axis. And would that also work? All right, so B... I look at B, I have three spaces, one, two, three to the left, and I would flip it across the y-axis, one, two, three to the right. So yeah, all of these, you can see, would still match up. Okay, so it does still work. So in this case, if we change the order, it still works. And part C, find a second way different from part A and part B to get from our original triangle, ABC, to the second one, PQR. And again, we haven't done this in class. So it's going to be hard to know different types of transformations. I mean, you can go back to the previous page and see what other options we have. So what I would do is not worry too much about understanding what they're called or how they all work just yet. But I would definitely get a piece of paper, trace over A, B, C, and then see what you just think about how are you going to move that paper so that you would line it up with P, Q, R exactly. Okay, so try different things. So just think about if you turned your paper, that means a rotation. If you flip your paper over, that's a reflection, and if you move it, that's a translation. Okay, so just play around with that. Just get an understanding of how these things work. So these transformations are very, very important in um, graphic design and, and creating video games and animated movies. So, you know, computers, they, just, they don't know how to move unless you tell them exactly point by point how to move a piece of a figure. So like a dinosaur is made up of tons of different triangles. And so the programmer has to tell each of those pieces how to move. So as the dinosaur moves, is the whole thing moving just as a block? Or is it taking a step? Is it moving its mouth? Right? So all those different points have to be told how to move. So three spaces to the right, one space down, or three spaces to the left. So all that information is just like what we're doing here. So this is like the basis of that. Okay. <clears throat> so here's some practice with reflections and um, looks like just reflections. Okay. So again, an, a piece of paper would be great. Trace over it, flip it over. Um, we need to be careful of a couple things here. So first of all, for reflections, think of a mirror. We need to know where that mirror is going to be placed. So this one says the x-axis. So I'm just going to put a dashed line to remind myself that it's going to be reflected over the x-axis. So I'll do one, and you can do the other. But um, we're just going to count, like we did before, how, many, how far away each point is from that line. So I have... I'm going to do the second one. Um, okay, so E. Let's look at E. So it is one, two, three spaces away. So I'm going to go one, two, three. So it was above. Now I'm going to write it below, and I'm going to put E prime. F, it's on the line, so it stays on the line. I'm just going to put F prime. So it's exactly the same point. 
Okay, and then D is one, two, three, four spaces above, and I'm gonna make it one, two, three, four spaces below and call it D prime. And then just connect those points. And that's it. Okay, so make sure you're labeling um, with primes. So if you want to use different letters, that's okay, but it's actually easier if you just use the same letters, but just put an apostrophe to show that it is um, the new image. Okay, and then this the next one is across the y-axis. So again, you have to be careful. Okay, you can read these very carefully. So this is the y-axis, so put a dotted line. So this is where our mirror is at. So when we re reflect it, we're going to reflect, we're going to count how many spaces to the left or to the right of this dotted line. So W is 1 to the left, so do the opposite. So W prime will be 1 to the right. Z is 1, 2, 3 to the left. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3 to the right. Z prime. X is 1 to the left. So we're going to go over to the right, make X prime. And then Y is there so y prime is here and then we just connect those points using a ruler or some sort of straight edge okay and that's it okay <clears throat> the last one um okay first of all let's just read this uh, what are the coordinates of the image of point K after a reflection over the Y axis. Okay, and then what is the coordinates of the image of point, this is supposed to be J, J. Okay, so all this is over the Y axis. So draw a dashed line on the Y axis, so that's our mirror. So it's just asking, what are the new coordinates going to be once we uh, once we reflect this? So it's just like we did up above. Um, we could just reflect it first and then see what we get. So K prime and then L, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, L prime. And then J prime is here. And then just connect those. Okay, so what are the coordinates of K prime? So K prime is at, let's see, one comma, one, two, three, one comma, three. Okay, and then you do the rest for J prime and L prime. Okay, so what are those coordinates for the red triangle? And then eventually, we would kind of compare the before and after. And then we can actually write a rule. Instead of doing this on graph paper each time, we would be able to do it um, just looking at the points. All right, so the next one is rotations. This one, we really need some tracing paper. It's very difficult to do, to visualize it without tracing paper. Um, so I'll guide you through how to do it. But again, I can't show you because I don't have tracing paper. Well, even if I did, it's on the outside of this video, so it wouldn't work. Um, but what I would do is um, I'll just I'll do it in red. So imagine there's a piece of paper over the top of this. And I'm going to just hold the paper down and then we need to we need a couple things before we start this. So um, these are rotations. So we're going to turn it. Um, we need to know what direction. So this one's clockwise. It's not always clockwise. Um, it could be counterclockwise. And then how far? This is 180 degrees. Okay, remember, maybe we need to just kind of draw. So that's 90 degrees, right? If we go all the way to here, that's 180. And if we go here, that's 270. And then back, it's 360. 
That's clockwise. Okay, <clears throat> so we need to know how far, in what direction, and around which point. So it doesn't say, so we're going to, for this, for eighth grade math, we're going to assume the origin. Okay, so I'm going to write, I'm going to put a point where I'm going to hold my pencil point down so I can rotate my paper after I trace it. And then I'm going to also just draw the direction. And that's one, we're going to go 180 degrees. Okay, so 180 degrees is just a, just the opposite side, right? The opposite direction. So I'm going to put my paper down. I'm going to put a point on the center where I'm going to rotate to mark it. And I'm also going to put each point and label them. So just put on your paper the point and the letter. If you don't want to trace the, the lines, that's fine, as long as you know where those points are, where the vertices are. And then we need a like a reference line. So it doesn't matter where we draw it, but I like to connect the, rota the center of rotation to one of our points. So I'm just going to put a dotted line. And then I'm also going to think about after we rotate, so we're going to rotate it 180 degrees, so it is going to line up right here okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna put that um on there as well so let's hold our paper down our tracing paper so put our pencil point on the origin and then turn it turn the paper with the other hand 180 degrees and then this whole thing will spin around and you will see where it's going to end up and l prime Right, then you just kind of peel up that edge of the corner and then you put a point on the graph. So that's L prime. And then K prime. And then J prime. And then we can draw our lines for the new triangle. Okay, so that's after a rotation, 180 degrees clockwise around the origin. Okay, so the next group is 90 degrees. So when we draw our reference line, we only want to go 90 degrees, right? So now it's you can use the corner of that paper to know what 90 degrees is, but it should be something like that. So it should be 90 degrees right there. So L prime will end right there. So again, trace it, label the points, and then turn your paper with your pencil point holding it at the origin, and then um, spin it 90 degrees clockwise. So until L lines up with L prime, and then you will see where the, the other points end up. Okay, and then we need to, for the last one, we need to graph the, the triangle first and then rotate it. So I'll help you graph it and then I'll have you do the rotation. All right, so x is at two comma two. So here's x, uh, y is at four, one, two, three, four, comma, five. One, two, three, four, five. So this is Y. And then Z is at one, two, three, four, comma, one. And then we're going to just draw our lines. And then it says to rotate 180 degrees, and we're gonna use the origin as the center. So it's very similar to the ones we, that we've done. Okay. All right, <clears throat> so the last part for today is another <clears throat> practice for exponents. And I'm just gonna rewrite it. So three to the second power times, times, I'm gonna use parentheses, times, three to the negative fifth. So we have exponents and we have the same base. 
So when we have the same base and we're multiplying, we're going to add those exponents. So the base will stay the same. I'm going to add those exponents. So 2 plus negative 5. Same thing as 2 minus 5, which is negative 3. So 3 to the negative third power. All right, so remember, we do not leave it with negative exponents. So I'm going to bring this to the denominator, flip it over. So it's 1 over 3 to the third power. And since it's a smaller exponent, we could um, write this as a regular number. So what is 3 to the third power? 3 times 3 times 3. Okay, so that is 27. So this was also the same as 1 over 27. So whichever answer you prefer, both are correct. Okay. And then um, over to the right, use expanded form. So it's kind of, it's what we did here. So what does that exponent mean? It just means 3, or that base, times itself 3 times. And that's it. All right, so that's it for day 6.